I would like to invite His Excellency, the President of South Africa, to deliver important remarks. Thank you for inviting me to this breakfast meeting to share our expectations for the upcoming third international conference on small islands developing states in 2014. Given the importance that South Africa attaches to the vulnerability of seeds. I personally attended the second international conference on seeds which took place in Mauritius in January 2005. Also in 2011, when South Africa hosted the Durban Climate Change Conference, the seeds played a key role in shaping the Durban outcome, particularly in elevating the issue of ambition which is of crucial importance to all developing countries, including African countries, which are particularly vulnerable to the adverse effects of climate change. Today, we are confronted with challenges whose scale and magnitude require global responses and collective actions. We believe that climate change and the resultant natural disasters we continue to witness require special attention in order to highlight the vulnerability of the developing countries, particularly the seeds. We know that vulnerability related to climate change can result in loss of lives and damage or to property and infrastructure that can easily cripple their small economies. The adoption of the Barbados Program of Action in 1994 was a milestone to highlight the plight of the seeds. Indeed, the Barbados Program of Action became an expression of the will and commitment of the international community to assist seeds to deal with their unique vulnerabilities. Their Excellencies, the Millennium Development Goals will remain relevant even after 2015 and thus any discussion on the post-2015 development agenda should be predicated on this framework. While South Africa welcomes efforts to consider the UN development agenda beyond 2015, we are of the view that the debate on what is to come after should not divert the commitments made to achieve the MDGs. South Africa is honored to have played a role together with Ireland in the facilitation of this process and thank fellow member states for the support and trust that had been bestowed on us to ensure that this event is meaningful. <clears throat> Your Excellencies, more than 10 years ago, the Millennium Declaration was adopted, representing the most powerful international commitment for a new partnership to combat poverty, hunger, disease, illiteracy, environmental degradation, and discrimination against women. To date, the Millennium Declaration and the Millennium Development Goals continue to provide a unifying framework for the development activities of member states and non-state actors alike. When I accepted the privilege of serving as one of the member state champions of this initiative, 
I indicated that the provision of quality education to all is one of the key priorities of the South African government. Our direct involvement in the Global Education First Initiative is therefore in support of South Africa's national priorities and interests when it comes to education. Indeed, as a country, we are convinced that uh, education is a catalyst for human and sustainable development. We are convinced that access to quality education and training enhances countries' ability to address socioeconomic challenges in relation to poverty reduction, creating and diversifying employment opportunities, public health, gender dynamics, environmental sustainability, public participation and governance. Education for all, and for that matter, quality education for all, requires funding. However, funding of education in my own country, South Africa, has been framed by the historical aspects of our struggle for democracy.